Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing today? Happy Mother's Day. Woo Are we grateful for the ladies in our life or what? How about we give all the, the mamas, all the ladies, a big hand of praise today. Come on, let's honor them today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, if you just want to move up and move into the middle a little bit, there's, the others are parking their cars and coming in and checking in kids. We'll make room. Uh, I am really excited today. I, I just can't wait to hear the message today. Uh, and But before we do that, you know what? We're going to invite the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Lord into this building. How many of you know the church is not a building? The church is you and I, right? And we welcome all of those that are watching on Facebook and YouTube today. And we thank you for joining us. We're going to have a great time in the Lord today. Father, we're just so thankful that your word says it, where two or three are gathered in your name, Jesus, you're right here in the middle of us. So, God, we know that when we get in the presence of, of you, that, that things change forever. Lord, and we just pray that, that Lord, today, Lord, you touch hearts, touch lives, touch marriages touch lord everybody that's listening or or involved in in this service today we give you all the glory and all the honor for everything you have planned in jesus name and everyone said amen
Come on, lift your voices this morning. Yes. 
Jesus. Only it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, God. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, only. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
David says, surely, in other words, 100%, absolutely, positively, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But isn't it a privilege that before we get to the house of the Lord, we're in the house of the Lord? And I think sometimes when we're going through something, we forget that scripture that says, goodness and mercy shall follow me. The goodness of God is just right there. But you know what we got to do? It says it's following us. We got to be still. Come on, somebody. We got to be still and know that he is God so that the goodness can catch up and we can embrace the goodness of God. Amen. That's a word for somebody today. Somebody has been way too busy. Come on, you just need to slow down. You just need to be still and know that he is God because goodness and mercy has been following you. You just need to stop and let it catch up to you. You receive that today? Amen. God bless you. Hey, let's do something we haven't done in a, in a long, long time. Greet somebody that you don't know and tell them Happy Mother's Day. Even if they're a male, tell them Happy Mother's Day. doesn't matter. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> what a great church. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And it's good to have our great friends, Greg and Donna, with us today. Can you give them a big hand of praise? They have a great mission, Carry the Light, where they build orphanages all over the world. And we support them as a church. And it's always good for our friends to come back and, and be home and worship with us a little bit. Amen. Hey, we got something special that we love to do every big day holiday at Life Spring Church, and that is have a drawing. We want to bless some mamas today. If you're a mama today and you want to be blessed, just slip your hand up. All right. All right. Most of you do. Did every mama get a ticket? Did we miss anybody? If you're a mama in the house and you did not get a ticket, just slip your hand up real quick. If you want a second ticket. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Let's see here. I love to I love to go down here and be with the people. You know, the shepherd's supposed to smell like the sheep. So I'm gonna ask one our if you'll just draw a ticket out of there. Thank you very much. And hand it to me. This way, because we've had drawings before and we go, oh y'all rigged it. It was the pastor's daughter or you know, no, this is just a number. So I don't know who's got this. But it is 087. Everybody getting excited? Because I think everybody has 087. 172, come on down. Oh, Tina, come on down. Now, in the past, we thank you. All right, we would let you go shopping, but Chris is just going to give you one because we don't have time for shopping today. All right. Let's let another little one draw. Get a good one. Every mama's praying for you right now. Okay. And we have 087182. Come on down. Hey, all right, all right. Good job. Right over there. Thank you. Good job. All right. Let's. Now we've had the. Well, I see another young one over here. Yeah, don't mix it up, huh? Okay. 087, how about 153? Almost. Oh, come on down. You're the next blessed one on Live Spring. Right over there. Yep. All right. Now, we've had 
How many of you want to change it up a little bit? Like your number hadn't been drawn yet. Like, see, come on, draw my number. Okay. We're going to go from young. We don't use the word old. We use the word wise. <laughs> the wisdom. Over 60 years of ministry experience. Draw 087-184. 184. Right there? Come on. All right. Now, all you guys that are winning today, you need to tell everybody that you know, hey, I went to church today, and I got blessed up in here. Thank you. God bless you. All right. Now, we've had, we've had young. We've had wise. Let's go right to the middle, middle lane. Oh, no, 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 no not, not you, Mama. <laughs> she gave me one of them looks that only a mother-in-law can give. All right. Hey, I know, I know who has this number. Okay, who is it? It's my mom. <laughs> uh, see there? 087166. Come on down. I said 166, not 666, okay, so don't be getting all preaching at me. All right, let's just go back here. Let's just, I don't know. What are we feeling? Oh, your wife's praying for you, honey. No pressure. Well, is your ticket 087163? Hey, come on down, Danielle. Good job. Way to get blessed at Life Spring Church. All right. I, I just feel like somebody with a great beard needs to draw. Nick. All right, Nick, thank you. Good job. 087158. Maddie, come on down, Maddie. Woo -woo. We need to get y'all t-shirts that says, I got blessed at church today. Let's go deep. Let's go deep back here. All right, y'all are going like, please don't come to me, please don't come. Okay, David, another good beard right here. All right, 087180. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't your husband, but you got drawn. There you go. Looks like we got two left, two left, two left. Let's go over here. Let's, let's let our guests, great friends, missions, draw it out here. If y'all don't get drawn, y'all get mad at these two, okay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, 087167. 167. Come on. All right, Heather. Heather, if you could just slip a little extra to the missions department, all right? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, just say I got you. Last one. Last one. Last and certainly not least. We love our hearing impaired couple. Everybody let them, give them some love this morning. We're so thankful they're with us this morning. Would you like, yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, 087161. Woo, Brandy. All right. Just want y'all to know, we rigged the whole thing. Not at all, not at all. Not all. Hey, okay, uh, uh, just in the real quick, in the way of announcements, we have something exciting coming up on June 11th. Everybody say June 11th. I know that's a ways down the road. June 11th, we're going to have a baptismal, okay? So if you know somebody that needs to get baptized, they don't even have to go to our church. They just have to be saved. They have to belong to Jesus. Amen. And we'll make sure and, and cover that before we, we baptize them. But just mark that down. Listen, if you have been baptized as a baby and you got the sprinkler system put on you you need to get baptized in the baptism of john the baptism of water and we'll do a teaching on that but but it's it's a great thing to show everybody hey i'm a christian and i believe in jesus and i'm part of a great body so we want to offer that to you um and next i'm just gonna move out of the way because we have a special treat today you only hear from her Every now and then, she's one of a kind. She used to work for $1 an hour. Now she doesn't even get paid. And she's a great woman, 
and she's the sweetest woman and the most beautiful woman. Please give it up for your first lady, Amy. She has to wake up to that every morning. Love you, babe. <laughs> I told the worship team before service this morning, I said, they were like, man, is he always like this? And I said, no. I said, y'all pray for me because he does not speaking today. And he still had his usual cup of co cups of coffee. And um, I got up at 530 and he was already up. So... He's not getting his words out this morning, so that means I'm going to be getting an earful for the rest of the day. <laughs> Love you, babe. <laughs> but hey, before we get started, I have a few um, other mamas that I would like to honor today. Um, the first one, babe, will you get the pink roses, please? No, pink roses, babe, roses. Oh, roses. <clears throat> I need a flower lesson. <laughs> These are for my mama, who is here today. Happy Mother's Day. And you don't have to be around her for very long to know pink is her favorite color. She's an award winning mama. She won an award a while ago. Yes, I drew her number. Yeah. And then this is my, these roses here are for my bonus mom, Darlene Walker. Orange is her favorite color. Happy Mother's Day. You don't have to get up. I can't reach very well. And then there's some other mamas here. Y'all bear with me. I'm moving, but I'm moving slow. Um, these flowers are for some of our other mamas here at the church. Miss Danielle, can we wish her a happy Life Spring Mama's Day? You're welcome. Another mama, Miss Brandy. Brandy gets double blessed today. Thank you for all you do. Ministry is not easy, and it makes it even harder being a ministry worker's wife. Yes, these are all the mamas, all the Life Spring Mamas leadership team. Miss Maddie, I get to give these to my daughter in law. <laughs> Thank you so much, sweetie. And then, last but certainly not least, because she is part of the glue that holds the church together, is Miss Krista. Okay, now that all that's out of the way, babe, can you help me get back up these steps, please? <laughs> for those of you who may be new or you haven't been here for a little while, I've been dealing with um, back issues and actually had surgery a few weeks ago, um, a disectomy on my back. And so I honestly, I look for any excuse I can not to have to speak because I'm much more comfortable behind a keyboard. Um, so I told Rex, I don't think I'm going to be up to it. I don't think it's going to work out. But then very quickly, the Lord um, just kind of spoke to my heart, and he said, I know you're not comfortable doing this, but I've been doing some things in your life over the last few years that I feel like you need to share with, or share with the church Amen. and the other ladies in the church, um, especially. So it's more than just a sermon here this morning. This is um, just a very real and raw, and I might need some Kleenex testimony of what God's been doing in my life the last few years, and I really feel like it's not just for me, but it's for y'all to share as well. Um, I'm a woman. Well, thank you. Y'all really think I'm just going to be a ball bag up here today. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> just in case. So, uh, so I began to jot down some things, y'all, and I have six pages of notes, but I promise y'all I'm not going to keep y'all here all day. First of all, let me say this. My son brought me this picture that he colored of Moses because for as long as he's been able to color, he has colored me a Mother's Day picture. <laughs> and so even at 25 years old, he's still coloring his mama a picture <laughs> of Moses parting the Red Sea. But anyways, um, so um, I just want to talk to you this morning I had the privilege of meeting with some women's leaders 
And they asked me to share at a women's leadership conference coming up at the end of the summer. And they said, we're all going to be sharing about women in the Bible that we can relate to. And so I'm sitting there and I'm listening to all these women and they're going, Rahab. And I'm like, whoa. And they're like, Jezebel. And I'm like, whoa. Man, God's really done some stuff in their lives. <laughs> Anyways, and so they came around to me and I'm like, I have no idea. There's not just one. I can't pick just one. And I said, does it have to be a female? And they said, yes, it has to be a female. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's a women's conference. Okay, okay, okay. So anyways, fast forward a few weeks as I was praying about it and just thinking about it. God led me to Mary and Martha. So I'm not just going to be talking about one woman. I'm going to be talking about Mary and Martha, the tale of two sisters who experienced some very same things, but from a very different perspective. <laughs> And so, um, you know, life is comprised of choices. And I looked up online and it said that we make about 35,000 choices a day. That should wear you out right there, just thinking about that. They said, well, you make a choice or a decision every two seconds. So, so much of our life is comprised by the choices and the decisions that we make. We can't always control what happens to us, but we can control how we respond back to it. Um, the last few years have been filled with many, many blessings, and the blessings way far outweigh Amen. some of the more difficult things that I've been with, but I feel like I have been at every turn meeting um, sorrow, meeting loss, meeting um, um, betrayal, loss of trust, and um, I'm not going to lie, and I've shared it before. There have, there have been moments where I have looked at Rex, and I'm like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. I can't, I can't keep, I, I just, I, I can't. I need to take a step back. I need to take some time away because I need to refresh in my head. And, um, and that's kind of where some of all this happens. So, you know, every time some sort of stress or unfortunate event happens in our life, we have the choice to choose to respond as a human with fear, anxiety, resentment, worry, and anger, or we have the choice to respond as a human who's been saved by grace with trust, faith, and joy. There are some things in, that have happened that I'm not gonna go into detail with that I completely responded wrong, and I've had to go ask for forgiveness, but there have been some things that I have done right. And so this morning, I just wanted to share, I only have two quick points. Pastor Rex would make this a two-month series, <laughs> but I have two points. <laughs> I have two points. I have the beginning and the end. <laughs> and so um, in talking, uh, we're going to talk about Mary and Martha this morning, but my first point is quiet or busy. When stress, worry, and anxiety come into our life, do we respond by getting quiet with God first, or do we respond with getting busy? You try to work your way through stress. <laughs> Anybody else ever do that besides me? So let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 38, and that's where we're going to kind of start here. It says, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha... Does anybody, what's, what's something that pops out in your head when I say the word Martha? Serve. Serve, yeah. Martha, serving, welcomed him to her house. And she had a sister called Mary. Anybody, what do you think about Mary? Sitting. Just sitting. Yeah, we're going to find that out in these stories. She had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And that word heard means absorbed. She absorbed his word. Luke 10, 40 says, but Martha was distracted with much serving. <laughs> I can so relate to Martha. Restracted, um, you know, you like to think, I mean, so here's the deal. They're, Mary and Martha are at home, and all of a sudden Jesus comes in with all his entourage and begins to teach in their home. And so Mary's like, woohoo, Jesus is here. I'm going to go sit at his feet, and I'm going to learn everything that he has. I'm just going to absorb everything that he has to say. And Martha's brain immediately goes to, oh my goodness, I need to make lunch, I need to clean the house, I need to go clean the bathrooms, oh my gosh, they're a mess, you know, I need to, you know, make sure everybody has something to drink, you know, Martha goes into much serving. And um, I, can, I can so relate to this, I'm going to give you all a quick example. When I was down with my back, 
and I had just had um, epidural steroid injections in my back the day before. And um, Rex, we were supposed to go to dinner that next night with some people, um, some of his family that were in town. And so I told him, I said, I just can't go. I'm still, I'm in pain. I'm still not feeling it. I really don't want to be around people. I couldn't even sit up for more than like 10 minutes. And I didn't want to go sit in a restaurant. I knew, and I didn't want Rex feeling like, oh, Amy's in pain. I need, we need to leave, you know, trying to. So I said, just go and just have a good time. So he left. I put on my jammies. I washed my face. I got on the couch and I turned on Hallmark. <laughs> what any other woman would do. And I'm sitting there, I'm almost asleep. It's like nine o'clock and Rex calls me and he says, hey, I hope it's okay, but I invited my family to come back to the house. They all wanna see you. <laughs> Is that, and he says, is that okay? <laughs> and I'm like, um, okay, babe, whatever. Yeah, bring them on over. And so I have to get up and go get my clothes back on and brush my hair you know, straighten up the living room, put the blankets away, because I didn't want them to think I just laid around all the time, you know, put the blankets and pillows away, <laughs> and they come in, y'all, there was even one guy there that I'd never even met before, he was just a friend of one of the family members, and they sit down, and I'm thinking, okay, I need, do they need tea, do they need snacks, have they had dessert, maybe they want some dessert, and so in my, that's the way my mind was going in all of this, because some of us are programmed that way, and others are programmed to go and, you know, just sit down and enjoy, because they're going to have the Marthas there to bring them anything they need, <laughs> and so anyways, it was just kind of funny, and they stayed till like almost two o'clock in the morning, and that was, um, that was not fun for me, it was fun for them. But anyways, so I understand, I understand, you know, Jesus came in with his entourage, Rex came in with his entourage. So anyway, so let's keep going. <laughs> Luke 10 40, but Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Have those words ever come out of your mouth? Have you ever felt this way? Just alone, no one cares. I'm doing all this stuff and nobody, I'm having my own little pity party here. Nobody here is here to help me and I'm just serving them and I'm doing all these nice things for them and they don't even appreciate it. And so she said, tell her to help me. So Jesus, tell her to help me. And Jesus said to her, Martha, 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 you are worried and troubled. And that word troubled means anxious. You are worried and anxious about many things. <laughs> but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not take, be taken away from her. See, this was the time to be sitting. Jesus was in her house. I don't think that when Jesus said this to her that he was like, Martha, Martha. I don't think it was that way at all. I think it was more from a posture of compassion and saying, Martha, Martha, come on. Just, you know, come in here and join us. You don't need to be working alone. Do you not realize who I am? I can provide lunch. I mean, literally just a chapter before that was the feeding of the 5,000. <laughs> There's no way she had more than 5,000 people in her house. So, um, so anyway, so just that's point number one. When stress and tension come into our life, we have a choice to get quiet or to get busy. Don't try to work through stress. Just go sit at Jesus' feet. Just take a few minutes and just be quiet and be still like Pastor Rex was talking about earlier. Be still and know that he is God. Give him that first first response when stress comes into your life, not the last response. Let being quiet be the first response. There's a time to be called to action, but there's also a time to just sit at Jesus's feet. And it's important that we understand when to get quiet and when to get busy. Okay. Page number three. <laughs> Point number two, temporary or eternal. When stress, worry, or anxiety come into our lives, do we respond with a temporary mindset or an eternal mindset? 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Let's go over to John 11. We're still sticking with Mary and Martha. They're experiencing the same thing, but from different perspectives. 
John 11, 1 says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus, of Bethany, the, in the town of Mary and her sister Martha. So they're all brothers and sisters. John, I mean, now Jesus loved Martha and her sisters and Lazarus. So when he heard, this, this makes no sense to me. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, Jesus stayed two more days in the place where he was. <laughs> you know, a couple months ago, our little granddaughter, Gracie, she had to go in to have her, um, her tubes put in her ears and her adenoids removed and all that. And, you know, she had just turned two. And we had Camden, the older brother, our grandson. And, you know, you think, just no big deal. They're going to go get tubes put in their ears. They do this kind of stuff all the time. Everything's going to be fine. And when we got that call that she was not waking up from the anesthesia and was being rushed to Children's Hospital by ambulance, we didn't say, okay, well, we'll, we'll see y'all later. <laughs> you know, so I, 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 have, I have had trouble understanding. He heard that he was sick, but he went ahead and stayed two more days where he was. So um, in John 11, 11, jump down, it says, These things he said, and after he said to them, Our friend Lazarus, this is Jesus talking, uh, sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. And then the disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking a rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, <laughs> and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there so that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Maybe it was in his plan all along not to just heal Lazarus. Because he was touching, he was healing people everywhere he went. Maybe he was ready to go to another level. He wanted to increase their faith even more. And so, John eleven twenty. 20, let's jump down. And it says, then Martha, <laughs> as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. <laughs> busy, busy Martha. But Mary was sitting in the house. <laughs> It shows just such different personalities. I love it. John eleven twenty one. 21, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Remember that. Remember that verse. Next verse says, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Do you understand how hard, like when she's saying, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. That is a that is a temporary response. That's a natural response in those kind of situations. If you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Oh, well. But then she flips right around and says, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Turns it to a divine response. <laughs> she goes from one side to the other. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And then here she goes right back to another human response. Martha says, I know that he will rise again at, uh, at the resurrection at the last day. <laughs> And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Once again, another eternal perspective, another divine response that was from God. So then Mary comes to the party a few, <laughs> a few verses later. She comes where Jesus is, sees him, and falls down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. The very same thing that Martha said. <laughs> the very same thing. You know, when we go through tragedy, and I'm guilty of it, um, we kind of, we, we feel like sometimes we're just abandoned, that we've just been left alone. Like, what have we done wrong? Now I'm here all alone. I've got to deal with this problem. I've got to deal with this situation. You know, God, where are you? It's kind of a little pity party, and we begin to look for where God is. You know, we express our hurts. We express our disappointments. We, we do. I mean, it's just, like I said, that's our natural response. And that's what I'm wanting us to become more aware of as we process through, whether it's grief, whether it's depression, whether it's, um, you know, someone hurt you, someone betrayed you, there was a broken trust, there um they rejected you. Whatever it is that you're, look for the eternal perspective in that and not just the, um, the human flesh response. Um, but, you know, the flip side, because we are flesh and because we are human, I think that is why Jesus became human, so that he can feel from the human side what we feel. Because Jesus not only knows how we feel, but he feels how we feel. He's experienced all of that. Hebrews 4.15 says, We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality, 
He's been through weakness and testing. He's experienced it all but the sin. And so the story goes on in John 11, 38 and 39. I'm not going to read the whole rest of the story. But it says, Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. And once again, Martha, the sister of him who was dead, says to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. For he has been dead four days. Like she didn't think he knew that. Another human response from Martha. So every time stress comes into our lives, we can make a choice to have a human response or a divine response. We can choose to respond with fear, anxiety, resentment, worry, and anger, or we can choose to respond with trust, faith, and joy. Over the last year, over the last year, there have been four people probably even five, but for sure four, who I have thought of as family and I have loved deeply and have had long relationships with who have passed. And they've all hit me very hard, but in different ways. And um, I don't know if you guys remember, but about six weeks ago, a man by the name of Tony was here and we brought him down and we had prayer for him. We met Tony and his son probably 20 years ago. His son was involved in gangs at 14 years old and was in a um, gang fight and had been stabbed repeatedly. One of the stabbings had severed an artery or something in his arm. And, um, you know, Rex, he had gone to meet his brother for dinner and was driving home and took a wrong turn in Mesquite and was driving down the road whenever the son, Anthony, stumbled out into the street and collapsed. And Rex picked him up and put him in his truck, took him to the emergency room. I don't remember how much blood they had to give him and how many surgeries he had to have. And, um, but it was very scary. But through that process, we were able to not only meet Anthony, we were able to meet Tony, the dad, yeah. and another brother um, that Anthony has. Uh, now Anthony has sons, but anyways, so we've known Tony and Anthony for a long, long, long time, and in preparing this message, (laughs) um, I was going to talk about, you know, how sometimes, and I think this is true with with Martha, sometimes we do things that we think are a, um, a natural response, a human response to something, like Rex taking a wrong turn. (laughs) But God can take it and turn it into something divine and weave it into his masterful plan. And so in preparing this message, I wanted to share that story to remind us to continue to pray for Tony. But Tony passed this last week. And it's another heart grief, another heart loss to process through. I know where he is, and I know that he's healed, and I know that he's not in pain anymore. But, you know, it leaves us here on this side of eternity who are, you know, waiting to experience that loss and to experience that grief. But eternity is a very real thing. And I think too many times we put our focus on this life and not on eternity. And, Rex, if you can help me right quick. I have this red rope up here, and um, Brother Glenn thought we were going to hang people this morning. (laughs) But I promise that's not the case. Um, Greg or Donna, could you you all stand right over here? Could you come up here and get this part of the the rope and stand over here on this corner? I'm so glad you all came today. Thank you so much. That's very special to me. Yes, get the whole thing. And then, yeah, if somebody can hold it there and then walk it back, like, um, you're probably wondering what this has to do with my message. It's okay. Thank you, Braden. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Michael. 
give us just one second because I'm literally finishing up. What this red rope represents, I need y'all to hold it up so everybody can see it, is eternity. Not literally, but what it's going to represent is eternity. I think too much of the time we're focused on this yellow piece right here, which represents our life. <laughs> and the prayers that we pray and the things that we think about and that we live for are all wrapped up. I mean, if we live a hundred years, let's say this yellow tape represents a hundred years. But what about all of this? What about eternity? Those who we love who've gone on before us, this is where they are. This is where eternity. This is where, like, my parents, well, my parents are still here, but my grandparents, this is the prayers that they prayed for, for me and for my family, for even this church. They live here. They don't live here. I think if we could take our lives and focus our prayers and shift our thoughts, our words, our actions, everything that we do on this eternity, those things will live on forever in eternity and here on earth. <laughs> so this morning, as I close, whew, I've got a few questions here. Because what is God speaking to me today, to us today as a church body? Is he maybe challenging us in the area of learning when to be quiet and when to be busy? <laughs> or is he challenging us in the area of being more focused on this than this? I don't know what he's challenging you, um, the areas that he may be challenging you in, but over the last few years, this is what continually, continue, continually, continually, continually comes up. And you have to be intentional about it. I want to live my life and I want to pray prayers for my grandchildren and my grandchildren to come and their spouses, and their kids, and this church, and the people that are going to be coming to this church from now until Jesus comes back, and the ones that are yet to come. I want them to live on through eternity. I want to be eternally minded. I don't want to be temporary minded. And whenever we can figure out when to get quiet and when to get busy, that helps this so much more. So much more. So um, I want to close this message. I think it's perfect. Y'all can put the rope down. I think it's um, a perfect time. I want to have um, Pastor Rex come up and Tina come up and her family, whoever wants to come up with her. Tina came to me. Well, first of all, I met Tina during COVID. Y'all don't trip over eternity there. Yeah. <laughs> I met Tina during COVID. Um, she would watch our services online and she would message and we would chit chat through Messenger. And, um, and then when she felt ready, they felt ready like it was time, they started coming to church in person. And what a blessing they've been. Y'all all know Billy and Tina, right? I mean. <laughs> And so now Tina and I, we don't have to message through Facebook Messenger. We can just talk in person. <laughs> and um, I was talking with her a couple of months ago, and she was telling me about how before COVID that the Lord was really speaking to her um, about becoming ordained, that she felt a call to ministry in her life. And then 
COVID happened and it just quite never happened. And she said now that she's back planted in church, she feels that again, that God has something for her. And I think we can all attest to that. Um, if you've spent more than two minutes with Tina, <laughs> she wears her heart on her sleeve. And um, I love that about her. She's um, jumped in and helped with youth. She jumps in and helps with women's events. And um, I just, I can't thank her enough. I'm so grateful for God sending y'all to Life Spring Church. Yes. So I told her, I said, we can ordain you. We can ordain you and then you can get your licensing or whatever, however you wanna, however you wanna do it. And she was like, really? And I said, yeah. And I said, you know what? As a matter of fact, I said, I'm planning to speak on Mother's Day and I would love to do it at the end of my message because what a way to tie all this up <laughs> than to ordain a good friend of mine that I love so deeply. I don't know if y'all can get up here. I'm going to give this to Rex. Well, I got this, so I'm good. Thank you, old lady. But uh, as Amy said, we love Billy and Tina and uh, they're a great part of our family. And... You know, a lot of places will say if you want to be ordained that you got to have a seminary degree, you got to have all this education. But can I just tell you what the Bible says? The Bible says you got to be fat, faithful, available, and teachable. Paul wrote, wrote Timothy about it and find ones who are faithful, available, and teachable. So we pray for fat people to come to Life Spring Church. Spirit, spiritually, spiritually fat. I'm not talking about this belly that God has blessed me with. Or I, No, I'm sorry, Lord. I can't blame you for that. This belly that, that I've given myself. I'm talking about faithful, available, teachable. Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? And this couple is faithful, available, and teachable. We're, we're proud of Billy also. He's, uh, in fact, on Father's Day, we're going to present men with swords that have earned uh, the place in our Bible study and that are faithful, available, and teachable. And, uh, but we'll talk about that on Father's Day. Today is Mother's Day. And by the way, did you guys appreciate that message? Yeah. Amy did. Okay. And also, it was better than any Hallmark movie. I've fallen asleep during many Hallmark movies, okay? But it, it, <laughs> she, she's not lying, but it. But you just start preaching at me. I won't fall asleep. That's what you did today. I was, I was amen. But we are so uh, honored, honored to have this family. As many of you know, Tina is on uh, a circuit with Christian comedians, and, and we love her comedy. In fact, we're going to have another night in October. You guys get ready to buy tickets for that. But um, we're honored to have this family. And basically being ordained, in case anybody else is interested, um, that means we're going to put you to work spiritually. So uh, get ready, guys. <laughs> that means, oh, really what it means is to be set apart for ministry. It doesn't mean that Tina's going to go in tomorrow and tell her boss, that's it, I've had it, I'm out of here. It doesn't mean that. It means that she's going to be spiritually employed, spiritually uh, full-time at, at Life Spring Church. Oh, did Tina not work? Oh, okay. Well, Tina, Tina's married to Billy, so how many of you know that's a lot of work right there? <laughs> but, uh, and so we just want to do this, and uh, will you just stretch forth your right hand as symbolic of the blessing of the Lord? And we just anoint you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you that you are, you've chosen to surrender to the call of God, and Father, we just thank you for people who are willing to step up and to say, yes, I will be set apart for ministry. I will be ordained to the call and the work of God. Many are called, but few choose to follow through with it. And God, we thank you that Tina and Billy are following through today. And we just ordain them with the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are honored at Last Spring Church to ordain Tina Brazil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we give them a big hand of praise this morning? What a beautiful family they have, too. My wife, as in many of our conversations, she says, I have one more thing. So. Yeah, because he can talk, talk, talk. I would like for all of the women, if you feel comfortable, to come up here to the front. And I would like to ask. All um, women, not just mothers. Come on up, um, all women. My, my bonus mom, mom, can you help your mom get up here yep. on the stage, please? You can if you want to. Would you feel more comfortable doing it from down here? Y'all well, come on in. Come on in. Any woman that feels comfortable. What an honor. Would you pray a blessing over all the mamas? And you know, let me say, there's a lot of you that maybe at this point, you may, you may not have a child in your arms. You're a mama in the Lord. You're a mother of, you're a mother of Israel is actually a word that is a, a, of many spiritual children. And, or maybe you have 10 kids, you still need to be a mother of Israel. We need to reach beyond. Lord Jesus, we come to you today and we say thank you. Thank you so much for the honor of reaching out and of sharing that maternal instinct that every one of us have from the minute we're born to reach out to others, Lord. I pray that every one of us spiritually will reach out, will have much fruit to remain because of our compassion, because of our love, because of our understanding. I pray you'll give everyone, especially of all the mothers, an understanding heart to understand every child, to understand every one, oh Lord, to know, just as we've heard the message, how Mary and Martha were sisters, yet had such different needs. Oh, Father, may we have spiritual understanding. I pray blessing. I pray peace. I pray that you will give a, just an anointing in a real special way that every mother will just see little treasures in her children, in her family, in her spouse, and in, in everywhere she goes, Lord. Bless and keep. And we pray extra special blessing on our precious Amy. <laughs> bless her, Lord Jesus. Keep her. Give her good help. And we say thank Thank you so much for your goodness in the name of Jesus. And now may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We love y'all. Have a great Mother's Day. Hey, and every woman you can receive, we got little kiddos back there giving y'all flowers <laughs> on your way out. <laughs>